So just continuing from our previous video where we reinforced the uh, piles, um, I've grayed them out so it uh, doesn't obstruct the view. To this, in this video, we'll be looking at the pile cap and we are looking at an irregular shaped triangular pile cap. Uh, it makes for interesting detailing. Um, a lot of, and probably the bulk of the pile caps are square or rectangular, but for that, we can just go and look at the uh, pad footing videos earlier in the series um, on how we reinforce them because the bulk caps will be reinforced in a very similar way. So it's probably just the reinforcement that will differ. So um, for this exercise, we'll um, reinforce this uh, triangular bulk cap. And before we start, I'm going to drag over a little sketch. And in this sketch, um, it's just a mock up I did to show what a typical reinforcement layout for such a bulk cap would look like. So um, as a uh, 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 bottom one and a top layer in 20s at 200. It's these little double L bars you see as we call them in, in Australia, double L bars um, that lug each other. Um, going across in a vertical direction, we've got the bottom two and top two layers. Again, we've got in 20s at 200 just hugging each other. That sort of builds the top and bottom cage. And then along the side, the distribution horizontal steels along the side, again, yeah, it's in 20s at 200, just perimeter steel. And then also the engineer might call for a band of additional reinforcement, which is 32s, that covers a 700 strip over these two piles, and also over these uh, uh, sort of skewed piles uh, to complete the triangle. So we've got a band of 700 there and a band of 700 there, five bars there, five bars there, and seven, but uh, we'll see how that works. Maybe we make it six. Um, just for uh, so it doesn't get too congested so we can still see the reinforcement clearly obviously for your project you'll uh, put in whatever the engineer wants you to put in so okay let's let's just do the, the basic um, cage first so I'm going to be using rebar sets as I think they're the best suited for this job so uh, I'll trigger the rebar set and I will flick over to my uh, rebar catalog I'll pick the N20s as a main bar and then for the distribution by target spacing, make sure that I've got a 200 mils and then hover over. Now, remember with rebar sets, um, it's perpendicular to the edge you, that's, that's how the reinforcement will be placed. So for the first layer, I am going to pick um, this edge because they want that one to be the top and bottom layer. I'll pick that and I'll just say, okay. Now I can still, while I'm in the command, pick the other edges too. But I think for illustration purposes, I'm going to do a one bar set at a time so we can uh, complete them so it doesn't get too congested. It's going to get busy in this in this headstock or in the spile cap. So what we've got there is bars that kind of look like um, ligatures and we're going to break them up into um, L bars now. But I think at this point in time, I'll just click on the headstock so I can get my context toolbar and I'm going to flip over to my pile cap so we can just isolate the pile cap without seeing the piles. Okay, so if I click on this bar and I head over to the ribbon, I can then pick a splitter. And the splitter, what I'm gonna do is just split these bars just on the center on that side. I'm also gonna split them on the center on this side. So that'll give us a double L's in, in that area, sort of, yeah. We need to do the same in this area. Now, I just wanna make sure that I rotate properly. We want to split that face and also we want to split this face. I'll just turn it around and I'll also split this face. Okay, so I'll just quit out of that. Now what we can see is we've got double L bars spliced in the middle, um, top and bottom, the full width. Great. So what we can do now is we can do the other direction. It will be exactly the same sort of exercise. We activate our crossing toolbar, hover over this direction and say exit. So it will give us bars in the other direction. Now, clearly we can see we're missing faces here. So what I'll do is I'll take that bar and I'll also take the concrete, right click and then holding the shift show only selected so I can isolate those bars and look at them. And for this, to see what's happened here, I need to put on my leg faces. So under visibility, activate leg faces and then pick the bar. So we can see that if you look at the blue, we don't have a face here and we don't have a face here. Now, while this bar is selected, we can just have it head over to the ribbon here and say, add a leg face and just pick on this face. Now, if you don't see anything light up here, you've probably got this toggle switch on. So you can see that if you're in a pick point mode, you can't light up a face. Tickler uh, is expecting you to pick point by point by point to, to sort of add a manual face. So if you just click on 
uh, keep on clicking toggle until you're back to the uh, pick mode then you can select the whole face so that completes that leg and we also pick this one that completes that leg get out of there and also i'll switch my leg faces off so they don't clutter uh, the drawing so if i just redraw quickly again and then just reselect them and i select them uh, um, isolate them again right click shift show and select it okay so now we need to break those up and we do it exactly the same as previously we'll select the bar and we'll go over to our splitter we'll split the back and we'll also split the front so that takes care of of those except for the ones on the edges we need to do these two sloping faces as, as well so if i click there just make sure when you when you pick an edge that it's actually selecting the correct edge, edge to split or face to split so if i click here okay now let's have a look at what's happened yeah so on this we now have in the other direction you've got our u-bars lapping pretty much perfectly with each other so if i just redraw so let's look now we've got a mat a cage if you want to call it that is got 200 n20s n20s at 200 top and bottom both directions okay so now we can clearly see there's nothing on the sides and that's where that horizontal reinforcement comes in again i'll activate the crushing tool we still got our 20s at 200 i'll hover over this edge this time and select all and say okay so that will give us the horizontals i'll just re-click this bar and I just want to uh, sort of leave me a bit of room at the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is the start and end offsets. I am going to introduce a 250 millimeter um, offset there. So if I accept that, it pulls it nicely down. Now I think what we should do is just use some color coding here. So we can just distinguish between the bars. So that one, I'm just going to keep the next color down or class down, modify. And for the distribution, again, I'll just pick the next color down, modify. So we can see how three different layers so far so what i'm going to do is we need to split up the blue bars which is the horizontal bar so if i click them i also click the concrete right click and say show only show only selected holding your shift key that will give us that we need to split these up into sensible bars because at the moment it looks like a ligature waiting for an end condition so what i'm going to do is at the back here i want to get an double l and then i also want to split them on this side and this side so we end up with a with a v a VV and a VL uh, a shape bar. So what I'll do is click on click on the bar and then go to a splitter. I'll pick my concrete edge this side. It will split those. I'll pick the concrete edge this side. It will split those. So that will give us our double L on this side. Now on the two sloping faces, I'll just pick the center of the face to split that bar there. And then on this side, I'll split this bar there okay so that pretty much broke breaks up all of that so we can now see that um you know we've got our double l on on the back there and then we have our uh i think this is a vv and a, a no double v and a vl so i'll just redraw all of that so our cage is pretty much all done all we need to do now is add the additional reinforcement as the engineer wanted so what i'll do is go in the top view and i'll also just set back to the standard view quickly um, also while i'm here i want to just temporarily raise the the um the uh what do you call it the work plane using one plane up to this point because i want to draw some construction lines at that point and then also what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my auto to plane and the plane i want to use is going to be my work plane so this will enable me to draw construction lines at that level so if i go Control p to look at it from the top now what i can do now is i want to click this um file and this file so i can get the centers and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over to edit construction object line pick that center and pick that center that will give me a construction line if your line's not long enough just click it and then adjust the extension yeah i normally use just a meter a thousand because it sort of sees uh, seems to be a sensible one to use and then also i'm going to click this ball and that ball and again just engage the construction line and then click from this center to that center that again will give us the thousand 
and now to create the band I'll go to construction object copy with offset and this little uh, box that pops up here I'll just move it in here a bit if I click on it and I type in 350 which is half of the 700 enter I can then click on the line and just offset it both sides I can also click on this one and offset it both sides and that will pretty much give me the bands that I'm that I've worked on so if I just now go in 3d 3d view you can see where I've drawn those construction lines exactly on the on the user um, user plane so what I'll do here is I'll just go back to my auto and for the work plan I'll go back to a view plane and then also for the um, view uh, work plane I'll restore the um, XY global plane say change okay so it's back to where it where it needs to be okay so let's first put in these this band yeah so if I go to rebar and I go to crossing bars and I pick a 32 bar and yeah I am going to take away the start and I'm just going to clear those values that means take a little calculate for the target I'm going to pick a number and for the number of I'm going to pick a six and that pretty much is it now if I hover over this side yeah and then instead of clicking all of them I'm just going to click the bottom one because that's the only one we're interested in and then what's very important now is if you click this little tab here adjust guideline location because you don't want to use the whole width of the headstock you want to use just the zone there so if I click this grip and I drag it to that intersection there and I click the top grip and I drag it to this intersection yeah that's the band we want to reinforce and I say okay you can see that Tickler's given us the 32s and what I'll do here is I'll just change their color to something more spectacular there we go so that takes care of that additional reinforcement and if you look at the layering Tickler does a very good job at, at layering this for you you know it's it's like perfect job you don't have to do anything about it now what we need to do is do the diagonal now that's tricky because when you insert a bar Tekla picks it perpendicular to the face. Now we don't have a face in that line, but that's okay because we can we can manipulate it a little bit. So if I go to crossing bar again, and this time um, I'll use a different color once again just to make sure. I'll go yellow this time, and then I'll go for five bars, and that's okay. And then what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll pick the the regular sort of distance or the regular sort of section, and then I'll pick the bottom chord. And yeah, I'll just say okay. So it just puts those five bars over the full width. Now what I'm going to do is if I go up to Control P, look at the top, I'll pick this band, that band, I'll pick my concrete, but I'll also pick these bars that I've just put in. And I'll say right click, hold in your shift, show only selected. Okay. Now remember, Tekla will always draw bars perpendicular to the face. In this case, this case, so it's perpendicular, but it's also perpendicular to the spacing line so what we can do in this case now is we can say draw a line if I go edit construction line line from this line perpendicular to this line we have a line there that we can deal with so if I now click on this line and I grab this node and I snap there and I grab this node and I snap to this side Tekla will then do those bars for us five of them in that band exactly like we want so if I just do a redraw show all of it you can see again tech has done a splendid job of the layering it's picked the next layer for us now all we need to do is to grab this set and say right click copy special mirror and we mirror about uh, this um, axis copy so that puts the bars on the other side so what we can do now is there's going to be clashing yeah if we click this set that set and that set and we say right click uh, show only selected and we look at them we can then see that this and this is okay but this is not okay um, what we can do with this set is we can basically uh, put a crank on it so if I click this bar and I go to end modifier make sure that I just reset everything and the type here we can pick a cranking bar and we'll just leave it as is make sure that you've got all of them selected and what I'll do is I'll just pick a pick a spot here and you can see how it sort of cranks 
the bars let me just go over you can see where the crank is it's a bit uneven and stuff like that but we'll fix that up now what i can do now if i go control p is i can just reduce that distance now if you look at these bars they're all sort of the same length on this side and that one's not so what we'll do is with this splitter we'll include those four in there and then what we can do is we can click on the on the splitting line itself and i'll go into 3d mode so we can see what's happening i'll click on the splitter itself and then what i'll do is instead of having a standard crank i'll say give me a custom crank and i'll just eyeball i'll pick a distance of a thousand just to see what's happening so it's pulled it up quite nicely so a thousand actually a thousand is not bad it's almost like at the right level okay maybe even 950 950 is almost like perfect okay so what we can do now is we can also go and say give us another splitter and what i'll do is again i'll just pick all of them but i'll click it and then i'll use the arrows to reduce it to just that one you could put them in manually by using the pick points but i find that if you do that sometimes it draws this little this little line right down at the bottom where the where the ucs each and it's just a pain to um to put them up again so for that one what i'm going to do with this is if i click on this one i'm going to make this one's crank say for instance 750 so it brings it a bit closer oh we can need more so we can go 650 maybe six or even 600. okay so that looks pretty much good Okay, now the, the last thing we need to change here is we've got to go to rebar and activate the leg visibilities again and then click on this bar so we can get the face so we can see or the face if we click on the face itself we can see that's still in layer four so if we click that enter a three there what happens then is we push it down one layer which means yeah it will slot in underneath those perfectly but it slots in over the over over the top of those and now if we do a redraw all of it we can get rid of these construction lines over here we can also get rid of those construction lines over there and if we look at the whole lot um, if we put for instance uh, make it solid and go and put a scissors control x is a shortcut scissors on this and we pull this down a little bit i'll just pull it down to there we can then see if we look down in here the rebar really sits very nicely in there in their different layers and so forth I mean, you could pull this away from that edge a little bit by increasing the cover or, or, or so forth on this bar uh, or the leg face. Um, but I think this is pretty much, uh, you know, done. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this first chapter in the series and uh, see you soon in the next chapter. Thank you for watching.